Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to demonstrate a couple of DOM properties, particularly client width and inner width. Okay, so I have a blank page set up, and I want to compare the differences between using the client width property and the inner width property. So I technically really don't need anything on my HTML for this, so I'm going to focus right here on the script section. And I'm going to declare a couple of variables. I'm going to let my client width be equal to my document.body.client width. So client width is a property of the body within the document. And I'm going to declare another variable called inner width. And that's going to be equal to my window. If I can spell window, my window inner width. Now that we, so that we can see the results of both of these, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just do a console log. And I'll do uh, client width is equal to escape new line plus my variable client width. Good enough. And I'm going to copy that and paste it. And this is going to be my inner width is equal to my inner width variable. So basically, these two variables are going to grab some values. And they're going to be different for every user. But it's going to be useful information for us to know if we wanted to start placing things in particular parts of a web page. All right, so now that I've got that, just Control S to save. Head back over to my browser. And I'm going to refresh. And I'm looking at the numbers over here at the right in my console log. And I see that my client width is 1236, and my inner width is 1268. So I've got a difference here in these two values. And we can see that the client width is smaller. So if you're going to control things, maybe client width is the better way to go. But I definitely want you to understand why these numbers are different. And remember, if I were to resize my browser window and then reload the page, these numbers will still be different. But of course, the, the spread is going to be the same. So. I'm curious about what's causing the spread here. Now, I already do have a little bit of styling on this page. You can see that my content isn't all the way to the edge. Uh, I clearly do have a border. And since I have some space between the border and the edge of the window, there must also be some margin in there. So let's head back over to the HTML side of things and experiment with some numbers. I'm not going to change the width of my browser window anymore. So let's just kind of notice these numbers, 1208 and 40. In fact, we can just look at the last couple digits, 8 and 40. So there's a difference of 32 in there. Let's see what we can do to uh, understand that a little deeper. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head up to the body, uh, my opening body tag. And let me zoom in a little bit more on this so you have a much better view. And I'll just go ahead and do a style equals overflow scroll. So basically, I'm going to add scroll bars to my web page even though I don't need them. So before I refresh, make a mental note of my values here of 8 and 40. When I refresh, 1240 is the same for my inner width, but my client width has reduced. OK, so that means client width is going to be inside of any space inside of the scroll bars. So if scroll bars appear, then you definitely want that. And if you don't know if scroll bars are going to appear on a web page, then you're definitely going to want that client width. So it might be a little bit more controlling to have client width information as opposed to um, inner width, because inner width is outside of those scroll bars, or it at least includes those scroll bars. So that's a good piece of information to know. Scroll bars are outside of the client width, but part of the inner width. And I'm going to get rid of those scroll bars, just overflow none, but I'll keep that property there. Control S to save. And when I refresh, we should see these go back to their prior numbers, 08 and 40. Now let's see if I can't get these numbers to match up with each other. So what I'll do first is I'll make sure that the body of my page has no margin. So I'm going to set margin to 0 and see if that does anything for me. And it did. So now my spread is 1224 to 1240. OK, so now I've only got a, a difference of 16. So definitely the margin was affecting my client width. And I think the only thing left on here, in fact, 
Let's try something that I'm pretty sure won't work. Let me set the padding to zero. Let's see if padding is affected. 24 and 40, when I refresh, nope, padding has definitely changed, but you notice 24 and 40 are still the same. So that means client width is not impacted by padding. However, let me put a border on, or border set to zero. So I'm gonna get rid of this default green border I have. And now we can see my client width and my inner width are matching up. So that lets us know that client width is affected by borders, by margin, and by any scroll bars that the element may have.